All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, uh, please invite your friends, and uh, let us uh, have uh, you know the the one who needs to listen to answers. Uh, I know that there is many answers in life, and we need answers for them. And you know, sometimes people who have uh, uh, you know agenda, they try. To play with those questions in order to get you the wrong answer so uh, today we are going to answer someone who post or he made a post in Facebook and supposedly the post is something negative about Jesus so today we are going to examine how truthful what Muslims say and how truthful about their own religion they are if we go and look at this post, we will find this Muslim, he posted the following. Let us go and check it out. In the front of you, you will see this Muslim, his name is Ahmed Ahijo Kodiko. And he is speaking against, uh, he is saying, according to God, the Gentile are dogs. It is not me to take the children breads and cast it to dogs. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just to show you going to show you the hypocrisy of the Muslims. Before we explain this verse and what this verse mean, I always ask myself a very simple question. Do the Muslims even know what is written in their books? Can you find me one Muslim in this galaxy, not in this earth, knows what Islam is teaching? Until now, I could not find one Abdul. He knows what Islam is about. We ask them, who is Allah do not know? They tell you he is the creator, but who is Allah do not know? What Allah mean? They don't know. What, what the word Allah mean? They don't know. You go to Muslim website, every, everybody start guessing, you know, because it's a guessing religion. What this verse mean? Allah knows best. What Allah is saying here? Allah knows best. Nobody knows. For this is a religion of Allah knows best. Now, just to show you the racism of this religion and the hypocrisy. Let us say, let us assume, for the sake of argument, just to go with the Muslims in the, in the, in the flow with them, let us say that this word is about racism. So I will take your granted, Muslims, that I will take your words for granted that you are agreeing that anyone who call other believe animals or dogs, he is a racist. And I think all of us now we got from the Muslim post the point of this post. According to God, the Gentile are dogs. What does the Gentile mean? The non-believers. But this is what Islam teach, my friend. This is not what Jesus teach. And let us show you how we get the Muslim busted from their own books. You know, I don't give speeches. I give a proof for every word I say. If we go here in the Quran, we will find the following. It is Allah who consider anyone who don't believe in Islam is an animal. And this is not my words. This is Quran. And what, what the Muslim they will say, the Quran is fake. By the way, we will go back to what Jesus said. Don't think we are jumping. Absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, your God Allah is going to fill up Jahannam, Jahannam, which is another proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. For Jahannam is a valley of the garbage near Jerusalem. Your God Allah, He made it as hell for Him. So, from hell, you know, why it's called Jahannam, why that valley was called Jahannam. It's a valley of garbage where the garbage, they keep burning garbage. So it's almost there's a fire there. 
people burn the garbage there so Muhammad the thief as usual he copy words from other religion he do not know even what they mean now look at this many are the jinn and the man we have made for hell they have hearts wherewith they understand not eyes wherewith they see not and ear and ears wherewith they uh, they hear not they are like cattle so what we are like for Allah we are cattle why we are like cattle is because we don't approve a prophet who says that God will give an endless penis for a person who go and do jihad for him why we are like cattle because we don't agree with the flying carpet and the flying horse of Solomon and the man who can hear the ant speech even though the ant don't talk at least by speech why we are cattle because we didn't approve and we don't agree that if a wife she is a little bit not making her husband happy the husband can beat her we don't agree and this is why we are cattle because we don't agree with a man having sexual relationship with a child like Aisha therefore we are a bunch of cattle so the Muslim Abdul trying to put what Islam is teaching on Jesus That is Islam teaching, my friend. So how come this is racism? If Jesus said so, it is not if Muhammad and Allah said so. Are we following? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy and ignorance. Now what Jesus said here, you know, uh, if you ask uh, many, everyone trying to give you his own interpretation, but for sure there is a root for this. The uh, the people who they are around the Jews, they call the Jews dogs, and the Jews they consider the one who called them dogs. They say to them, "You are dogs too." So what happened here? That those who say to 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 the Jews, "You are a bunch of dogs." Jesus is asking them aren't you the one who says and the Jews respond to you that why somebody will take the bread from the children and give it to dogs this is a traditional statement it used to be exchanged between the ethnic groups around the Canaanite, which is the Aramaic people around Israel and most of them they are a people who believe in the Sabi and faith and the Sabi in their books they called the Jews very bad names and even they call their god Adonai they call him the devil and the Sabi and they hated the Jews because because of Musa the army of the Pharaoh was destroyed and supposedly he was a Sabian so the Sabi and they have a special hate to the Jews so this woman she is not from the Jew and she is asking Jesus can you help me can you help me so what Jesus said to her I am not sent except to the sheep that have strayed from the house of Israel but she came and worshipped him and she said my Lord help me and you know the funny the Muslims they always ask us and they challenge us to show us one verse they say show us one verse it says that Jesus is God well isn't it this is in front of you the women she worshipped him and she called him my God <laughs> did Jesus says to her I am NOT your God did Jesus say to her why you are worshipping me yet the Abdul they say to us where Jesus said I am God worship me it's in the same verse you are accusing Jesus with is the same verse where it says that this woman she worshipped Jesus and she believed in him he said to her it's not good to take the children bread and cast it to dogs because this is what they believe too that anyone is not from their belief he is, he is like a dog he is not from the family this is what this is not what Jesus believe 
and the proof is in the following but she said yes my lord even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the hand from their masters table and they live but then Yeshua said to her O oh, women great is your faith it will be done for you as you will and her daughter was healed from that moment amazing story Jesus did not say to her you are a dog don't even try Jesus is telling her what they believe about the Jews why you are coming to the God of the Jews asking the God of the Jews to help you when you think they are dogs why you are asking me and I am the God of the Jews I am the God of Israel this is why she is coming to him did you Muslims ask yourself why even this woman she is coming to to to, to Yeshua why she did not go to someone else and why she is asking what about asking for some money to take him to take her daughter to the doctor the women she is asking for healing and she is asking the Lord the Messiah but she came and worshiped him and she said my Lord help me my Lord help me that is the Messiah please guys share the Facebook because not many they come to Facebook and my page usually I do it in YouTube but today YouTube is not working I don't know what to do it is really amazing how Muslims they try to make an amazing proof about the nature of Jesus the love of Jesus the help of Jesus to make it something evil about Jesus Jesus he helped this woman he did not ask her bring your wife bring your daughter so I will sleep with her as the same as Muhammad Muhammad he made a chapter saying any believing woman she gave herself to the Prophet so he can be with her Jesus did not even need to go and see the daughter he said to her it will be done it will be done as you will that's it that is the order of the true Lord he say be is going to be not like you're a prophet who his God told him give them honey and drink camel urine and he himself died by poison that is my Lord now we refuted their false claim about Jesus and this is why you see the Bible Jesus said that for the father he loved the whole world the whole world he sent his only begotten son so the messiah is for the black for the asian for the white and actually the first you know the funny thing about muslims uh, they ignore that their prophet himself he went as an asylum to a refuge as a refugee to the ethiopian church so if jesus was a racist how the Ethiopian they love Jesus and they accepted the Christ and this is one of the oldest churches in the world how the Indian accepted Jesus and became a Christian and they are in love with Jesus and for those who do not know there is one of the oldest churches Orthodox churches in India Christianity spread by the Apostle of Jesus all over the world and they never ask for nationality actually the Bible speak clearly that there is no Hebrew there is no Roman there's nothing like this there's no Greek for all of us became one by Jesus it is Islam my friend and we will show you verses from the Bible you know about that but if we go in Islam we will see the racism left and right Read with me. Muhammad he made verses in the Quran saying and stating that the Muslims are the best of mankind. Chapter 3 verse number 110. You are the best of the people raised ever raised up. Between two bracket the Muslims they put for you for the benefit. A Muslim now he will say, see, 
It's not about racism. They are, we are the, the best for the benefit. That's not racism. Hold on, hold on. Let us see what does that mean. First of all, for the benefit is not even in the Quran. This is additional bracket made by the translator. Have nothing to do with the Quran. As simple as that. You are the, the you are the best of the people ever raised for mankind. So all of this will go. And this is why actually it is between two brackets. And you can go check the Quran right you know yourself. This is what the Quran says in Arabic. There is no benefit, there's no garbage like this. Now, what does that mean? Let us say the translator he put the word benefit. Let us understand what he meant at least. Give him a chance. Maybe he wants to say something about this benefit. Let us see what this benefit is about. You will see here the translator. He continued translating, not adding bracket now. Quoting chapter 3, verse number 10, as we showed you. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. Whoa, what? So Islam is not a racist religion. Islam will only treat you like a dog, literally. I put a leech around your neck, literally. And enslave you, literally. And humiliate you, literally. In order to save you, literally. <laughs> in other way, or in other word, Islam uses all means of violence to force you to convert to this cult. Yet they are complaining about Jesus saying to that woman what he said. Can you see more hypocrisy than the hypocrisy of the Muslims? That's exactly what Islam is about. You know, I always try to uh, uh, to understand, you know, how the Muslims they think. But I, you know, I believe, you know, strongly after all my life studying this cult, that Muslims are a bunch of ignorant. They do not know what even religion their, their religion teach. I never met someone. He is a Muslim. He knows what Islam is about. They do not know what their God is about. They do not know who is their prophet. They do not know anything. Nothing. They are just copy paste. Somebody said, Jesus said, uh, uh, non-Christians non are dogs. So what we do? We say, we copy, we paste. This is in your Quran. This is in your religion. Not in our book. Jesus did not call people dogs. It was your God who called them dogs. By the way, uh, YouTube start working now. So we are broadcasting in YouTube. So when the Muslims speak about racism, and we see such a statement in the Quran that the Muslims are the best for mankind, chapter 3 verse number 10 110 and the best of mankind is those who bring non-muslims with the chain around their necks which mean slavery and killing and violence and invasion and torturing and humiliation and, and muhammad himself he raped tons of his enemies i mean how are you going to bring them to islam by raping them by killing their uh, even he burned their churches uh, he, uh, he burned their their their, their uh, houses he destroyed their houses he burned even their trees that is islam my friend they are hypocrite and they try to put what they believe on us for those in youtube because youtube was not working from the start we were able just now to make it work so we go back where the Muslims they quote for us a statement about Jesus saying to a woman uh, a statement and the Muslim they say this is a racist statement and the Muslim they claim that Jesus he 
made it clear that anyone is not a believer, he is a dog. In fact, this is not true and absolutely false. Non-Jews, they used to call the Jews dogs, and the Jews, they used to say that to the others the same. Because the non-Jews, they have their own belief too. And anyone who don't believe in their belief is like an animal. So he is saying to her, the woman, she came to him. She bowed down and she worshipped him. And as we mentioned, the Muslims, they say, where in the Bible Jesus said, I am God, worship me? Where? It's in the front of you. The same verse you are quoting for me from Matthew chapter 15. It says, But Yeshua went out from there and he came to the borders of Tasur and Tasidun and behold a Canaanite's women from those borders came forth crying out and she said have pity on me my lord son of David so this woman she knew she is talking to who my daughter is badly driven by demon but he had he did not give her any or answer and his disciple came and begged him and they were saying send her away she is a crying after us but he answered said to them i am not sent except to the sheep that have strayed from the house of Israel but she came and worshipped him and said my Lord help me and here we have to stop this is just for the Muslims listening in YouTube the women she worshipped Jesus calling him my God did Jesus says to her why you are worshipping me I'm just a man why he says to, did he say to her why you are calling me my God no and you will notice only when she worshipped him and she said to him my Lord that is the only time he did respond so the objection of Jesus to this woman you are coming from this country and you people don't worship me and you don't believe in me you don't believe in the God of the Jews so why are you asking me for help why you don't go and ask your God when people get sick when a Muslim he gets sick he asks Allah or he asks the black stone for he's a pagan Muslim like Muhammad you are from those people who worshipped other gods why you are coming to me this woman she worshipped him and she said my Lord help me now he answered for she have faith on him and she confessed her, you know, her, her, her faith he said to her it is not good to take the children bread and cast it to the dogs what is the bread in this case is that literally bread no is she really literally good dog no he is going to do miracles for those who believe in him. Why the one who shout for other God, he need the help of this God. And this is what they believe about the Jews. And this is what the Jews believe in about them. That anyone who is not from us, he is equal to a dog. He is not from us. So you say that about the children of Israel and now you are coming to the children of Israel asking them for help. But she said, yes, my Lord, even dogs eat from the crumbs that fell from the master's table and they live. And then Yeshua said to her, O women, great is your faith. You see here the tune of the speech changed. The Messiah, right away, he spoke to her in a very, from a kind of a tough language, 
to a very beautiful language. Showing his appreciation for this woman who have a great faith. And he did not discuss with her anymore because she announced her faith on him. So all what is required is your faith. And he said to her, it will be done for you as you will. When a man came to Muhammad and the man he have a brother, he is dying or almost whatever his disease is. Muhammad, he said to him, let your brother drink honey. The man, he came back after a few days. Muhammad, he shouted at him. He said, I told you, tell your brother to drink, drink honey. The guy, he said, I told him drinking honey, but he's, he's getting worse after he drank honey. He told him, go and tell him to drink more honey. So the guy, he went and he came back and he went and he came back. He went and he came back and the guy is dying. And then Muhammad at the end, he gave up because he's exposing him about his false medicine. So he said to the man, your brother, Billy, or stomach is lying and Allah told the truth. You will notice here, Jesus did not say to this woman, go and drink honey or tell your daughter to drink honey. He did not give her recipe and he did not say to her, you are not from Israel. Get out of here. He accepted her and he helped her daughter. So where is the racism there? The clinic of Jesus is open for everybody, for every race. And actually tons of the miracles Jesus he did for people who they are not even Jews. In the same time, we showed you how the Quran teach that the Muslims are the best of mankind and they have the right to enslave everybody. And it is the duty of a Muslim to enslave everybody. It is a legitimate duty in Islam. You know, if you are a good Muslim, you have to enslave somebody. So what the Muslims they always try to do, they try to take what is in their cult and put it on our belief. This is my right away observation observation for this uh, this cult. They always try to take what is on them to make it on us. This is the truth. What Muhammad he think about the Arab as an example? Guys, don't forget to post the YouTube uh, link around and the Facebook around, you, if you don't mind. I appreciate that all of you, you care, but obviously we Christian, we don't care enough. You see, if I am, if my name is Muslim Prince, I will have now 10,000 people watching. The Muslims, they have a cult, yes. They follow a pagan god, yes. They believe in a violent religion, yes. But they sponsor their cult. It's a shame that yesterday I made a video and then after 10 hours you find there is a 500 view. Why? A woman in Instagram, she is showing her panty. She have 11, 12,000 people watching life. Corrupt word. This is why Muhammad was successful in his business. For everything is about sex. Big ass. Big penis, size does matter. Even he described the size of their breast in the Quran. He knew exactly what he is doing. It is a shame 
that we offer education for free. Education I learned through all my life. And then we find 25 people watching in Facebook. What's wrong with this world? Why everything is upside down? If we go in the Quran, we go back to our topic. We just shared with you how stupid this earth is and how corrupt a human being is. You will see a woman, she is doing unboxing for a panty in YouTube and she have a three million after three days. Filthy, disgusting word. What Muhammad he think about the Arab? And what he think about non-Arab? If you have actually my book, The Deception of Allah, you will find endless list of racism. But we will go one by one. <clears throat> Let us see. You know, this website is really stupid. You try to find something, it, it gives you everything about... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let us see the racism of Muhammad and from the mouth of Muhammad. Who is the best in the world? Is it people who believe or it is people who they have a religion? Is it based on belief, like you believe in something? Is it based on ethnic? Is it based in, in, uh, in your behavior and value? We will see that, according to Muhammad. The Muslims, they will say to you that Islam is against racism, but the fact all of Islam is about racism. And we will show you tons of reference. I heard Allah Messenger saying, Verily Allah granted eminence to the Kinan from among the descendants of Ishmael, and he granted the eminence to Quraysh, amongst Kinan or Kinana and he granted the eminence of Banu Hashim amongst Quraysh Banu Hashim is his family and he granted me eminence from the tribe of Banu Hashim so the best of the best of the people in the world is his family this is what it says this is not my words and by the way, you know, when, when he say they are selected or elected to be the best, I mean, all his family are pagan, how they are selected and elected. All his tribe are pagan, so how they are selected and elected. Even his father and his mother, they are going to go to hell according to Muhammad. <laughs> if you go to the Quran, you will find the following. Why the Quran is made in Arabic? Is that because the Arabic is the best language? The fact, no. Arabic language is very complicated and very hard even for Arabian people to read and to understand. So why Allah, he chose it to be Arabic? If Allah is exist, but he is not anyway. It was Muhammad's choice. All those verses in the front of us is speaking about the Quran is an Arabic book. 
Okay, why it is an Arabic book? What is the point? The Quran itself will explain to us. Chapter 12, verse number 2. Translation. We have sent it down in Arabic in order that you may learn wisdom. Okay, what learning wisdom have to do with Arabic? There is any Muslim can tell me how we can learn Arab, uh, wisdom if the Quran is in Arabic. Anyone? Can't I learn wisdom in different book language? We did not get it. Let us continue. This is the Muslim translation. I'm not touching anything. Okay. Chapter 13, verse number 37. Thus we have revealed, have we revealed it to be a judgment of authority in Arabic. Were thou to follow their vain desire after the knowledge which has reached thee? Okay, what what does it mean to be in Arabic? Why this guy keep insisting that this is in Arabic? This is in Arabic. What is important for God to keep mentioning the word Arabic if Islam is an international religion? Why he keeps saying Arabic? Arabic language for Arab people. So what is the point? Let us continue. The Quran even make fun of those who don't speak Arabic. Chapter 16, verse number 103. Read with me carefully. We know indeed that they say it is a man that teach him, which means the, the Arab, they said to Muhammad, it's a man who is teaching him. They, the tongue of him, they wickedly point to it notable foreign. So if you speak a foreign language, you are a wickedly tongue. The person who speak Arabic, he is the pure. And he is the good guy. So Allah, he proved to us that this is Quran is coming from God because it's a pure Arabic. But the fact, by the way, Quran is full of words have nothing to do with Arabic. Starting with the word Quran. Quran is not an Arabic word. It's not even correct in a grammatical way, pronouncing way, spelling way. Everything about it is wrong. When Allah he revealed supposedly the Quran, he come to us with a verse saying that Allah he taught by the pen. And then we, Allah taught by the pen, taught what? Allah he taught by the pen? What he used when he spoke, he used the word qalam. But qalam is not an Arabic word. So the first few words in the Quran was not even Arabic, yet this God he insists that this is an Arabian poor or pure Arabic. You can go right now and search an Islamic website and they will say to you that the word Qalam is not an Arabic word. But it was one of the first words Allah he used supposedly in the Quran. Even there is a chapter is called the chapter of Al-Qalam, which means the chapter of the pen, but the word itself is not an Arabic word. Chapter 96, verse number 4, this is the first chapter supposedly was delivered to Muhammad when the angel, he squeezed him to get his mayonnaise out in the cave, if you remember. And Muhammad, no mayonnaise came out of him after three squeezing. Until now we are asking the Muslims why the angel squeezed him three times, they don't know. They have no idea why. And we taught him the use of the pen, you taught who? Like what the heck? Allah, he taught who the use of the pen? It is Allah who taught us the use of the pen. By the way, in Arabic, it doesn't say that. It says, Allama, Allama, bil qalam. He taught by pen. It doesn't say that it was the pen. I mean, the Muslim translation is very funny. But even if we go with the funny translation, Allah is the one who taught 
the people to use the pen the first people who use the pen they are not even believing in Allah so how they are those who he taught them to use the pen this is just to show you how the Quran is full of madness contradiction confirming that this is an Arabic Quran but the fact is not an Arabic Quran Yusuf Ali ch chapter 20 verse number 130 let us see what this verse is saying thus have we sent this down in Arabic Quran and explained therein in details some of the warning it says that in Arabic some of the warning it doesn't say that and we explain of it what of the warning in details but the Quran nobody can understand anything about it this is why the Muslims they end any interpretation for the Quran by saying Allah knows best because nobody knows what the Quran means it's a stupid book and we send it in a pure Arabic again the Quran insists Arabic pure, pure Arabic okay why why it's so important to keep saying we send it in Arabic we send it in Arabic you see if you go and see the Christians even the Jewish books you will find that the Jews their books written in many languages many languages including not limited Hebrew Aramaic Egyptian and we know that the Christians for sure they translated their Bible to all languages in the world however starting with the original Jesus himself he did not speak Hebrew only he speak a Greek for sure because you know at least the language of the Roman and he speak Aramaic and he speak Hebrew so why the God of the Christian speak many languages which mean it doesn't matter who you are why Jesus says go and teach and baptism all the world but the Quran keeps speaking about being proud that this is an Arabic pure book have no crock in it what why Allah is so proud about the Arabic language it is a Quran in Arabic without any crookedness therein what does that mean Allah is trying to show us that he is an Arabian boy who speak a very good Arabic that's false because the Quran is full of stupid mistakes grammar mistakes history mistakes spelling mistakes pronunciation mistakes so why he insists that this is a pure Arabic for Muhammad as you see he is proud about him being an Arab and he think he is the best of the Arab you remember where Muhammad he said Allah created the black people from the shoulder of Adam and the white people from the shoulder of Adam but how he created them from the shoulder You know this uh, hadith remind me about it uh, one of you when he called us not long time ago uh, actually I think it's in my book you know you have it uh, Allah created from the left shoulder of Adam And he said those people will go to hell. Let me get you the hadith.
Let us see. You see, we have the look what we found here. We found a Mikathir in English. That's a good one. Let us see. This is the book of Ibn Kathir, the stories of the Prophet. Ibn Kathir, this is not a Christian prince website. Read with me carefully, Abdul, and those are the reference. Let us zoom in so the blind can see. When Allah my Almighty created Adam, he hit his Adam's right shoulder and took out a progeny as white as the infant ants. Then the Almighty hits Adam left shoulder and took out the progeny as black as coal. He Almighty said to the first, which means the white people, Go you to paradise, for I do not, or sorry, I do fear not the consequence. He the Almighty said to the other, which means the black, Go you to hell, for I do not fear the consequence. What? The white, they will go to heaven, and the black, they will go to hell? And who is talking? Muhammad. In other account, the messenger of Allah may the peace and the blessing of Allah on him reported have to have said so take a note that the one who said this garbage is Muhammad himself and yet you Muslims speak about racism when your religion all of it is based on racism This is the truth. This is the truth. And the truth hurt. Not to mention how many hadith about Muhammad making fun of the black people saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, if, you know, you have to obey uh, if your leader is a black, even if he is like a raisin head, etc. All of it raises a statement Imagine if Muhammad is exist today, how many cases he would have in the court? And those cases made by black people. Muhammad, he made fun of the Asian people, how they look like. So he described the Turkish uh, in a very funny way, making fun of their look. We have tons of, uh, uh, as an example, if you marry a Kurdish, your son is going to be uh, a crazy person, a kafir, an infidel. Uh, Mary not African. This is what Islam teach. This is why, you know, I, I want you to check around you and tell me how many Muslim, white Muslim marrying black African and how many Muslim, Arab Muslim marrying white women. Me, myself, I never saw an Arab man. He's a Muslim marrying an African woman but I saw all of them they are desperately going after the blonde women for the roots of racism is deep inside them
That is the truth. And as long we are mentioning and talking about racism, not about now, today, we ask the Muslims, who is the country who owns slaves now? How many slaves right now we have in Libya? You see, they say to you, do you know that the white man used to capture the black and he sell them to Europe? The fact that the white man was not the capturer, he was the buyer. And the white man, he cannot be justified by the Bible. Islam justified any slave in others as long they are not Muslims. And we showed you that from the Hadith. And even this is included in the Quran. All North Africa is controlled by Muslim countries and those are the ones who import the black slaves to the white man in the West. They are the ones who go deep in Africa, they capture the poor black and they bring them to the white slavery market. But yet today, people remember what the white man did, but nobody want to remember who is the one who captured the slaves. Slavery is a huge business in Islam, and you can go, there is a book, it's called Musnadu Ahmad. In the book of Musnad Ahmad, you will find tons of chapters about slaves. How you can examine her legs, how you can examine her butt, how you can examine her chest, as if she is a good to buy before you buy. What is lawful for you to examine before you buy? And if you touch this before you buy it, you have to buy it. It's like, you know, you violated the goods. A religion, which is a huge part of it, is enslaving others. How many slaves Muhammad he owned and how many slaves Jesus owned? Any Muslim can give me a number? As long as Jesus is racist, as you Muslims claim, how many slaves he owned? Muhammad, he used to have an even dancing team in his house of slave girls. <laughs> uh. The Quran said the following, and this is one of the racism teaching of the Quran. You see, Quran discriminate not only by race and religion, discriminate by gender and by situation if you are free or a slave look what the Quran says يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم القصاص في القتل الحر بالحر والعبد بالعبد والأنثى بالأنثى. What does that mean? Let us see translation and see the madness of Muhammad. All who you believe in the law of equality is prescribed to you in the case of murder. Free for the free. Look at the wisdom, guys. Look at the wisdom of Muhammad. This is Allah talking. This is not a prophet of God making a law of his own. No, no, this is God. The free for the free. What does that mean? It's mean if a free white man kill a free white man, the free white man will be killed. Okay. What if a free white man killed a slave? His slave will be killed. You see it? Slave for the slave. What is that? What? I kill your slave, you kill my slave. So now we have two poor slaves get killed. Where is justice? Is that justice? I kill your slave. The punishment to me is killing my slave. So now we have two innocent human being killed just because they are slaves. For Islam considers slave a property. It's like an animal. Like you killed my cow, I kill your cow. And then continue discrimination, making a third category, women for the women. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this? Women for the women? So if a man, he killed my wife, I go and kill his wife? Who is the stupid here? Where is justice? What this? What the other women have to do with this? 
What about we say the one who killed, he will be killed? Muhammad, he was trying to learn about the Jews. So Muhammad, he don't understand at that moment what is the law of Moses, eye for an eye. So Muhammad, he took it literally as a stupid Arab person who do not have education. And we as Arab, we have people who have education, we have people who they are literally literate. That's the same as Muslim they say about their prophet. So this guy, he have literacy about the Jews. So he thought this is the law of Moses. And the Muslim later, just to show you that how Muhammad stupid is, the Muslim themselves, they admit that this law was abolished. How, for God's sake, God, he sent a law two weeks after, three, three months after, three years after, he changed it. Why? He found his, he was wrong? Yes, he found his wrong. He found that this is stupid. He found the Jews don't believe in this, so he changed it. Otherwise, there is no smart human being will use such a law to be a law. For this law is categorizing a human being to different three category: free, slaves, and women. And here discrimination is by you being a free, you are the master, you are above. So a free man, only if he killed a free man, he will be killed. Which means a free man kill a slave will not be killed. If a slave man get killed by a free man, we kill the other slave for the other free man who the one who is the killer. That is exactly a racist teaching. And Muhammad, because always he consider women are equal to animals, he put them in the end of the category. If you go in the hadith, you will see Muhammad saying this. Even Aisha, she said, قَدْ شَبَّهْتُونَ بِالْكِلَابِ You made us the like of, do of dogs and donkeys. <laughs> Narrated Aisha, the thing which annual prayer were mentioned before me and those were dogs and donkey and women. I said, you compared us to dogs? You compared us women to, dog, to donkeys and dogs? By Allah, I saw a prophet of Allah praying while I used to lay in my bed in, in the, between him and the Qibla. But this is what your husband, he said. <coughs> It's your husband who said that. Those people are just repeating. And Aisha, she admitted that this statement, making women equal to dogs and donkeys. Let us see. The prayer is severed by a black dog and a woman who had reached the age of menstruation. Black dog. Did you see the black dog? Did you see the black dog? In different hadith, Muhammad, he said, the prayer is severed or let us say is destroyed, defiliated by a woman and a dog and a donkey. It's Muhammad who said that. That dogs and women and donkeys are equal according to Islam. What about Muhammad he ordered to kill black dogs? Is that based on hate to a certain color? Or because the Prophet is all wise and he don't hate black color? The Messenger of Allah said, when any of you, any one of you stand in the prayer, there is a, a, a thing before him equal to the back of saddle that cover him in the case of there not before him a thing 
equal to the back of saddle, his prayer would be cut off by passing of an ass, a woman, and a donkey. Do you see it? Uh, black dog, sorry, would not mention the black dog. Black dog, why? I mean, why the black dog specifically is a problem in Islam? What is the problem? The problem will be explained by Muhammad himself. One of those who they are listening to this story, he said, Oh, Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar is the reporter for the story. And he was the companion, first-hand witness to this story. What feature is there in the black dog which is which distinguish it from the red dog and the yellow dog? So this person is asking, okay, why the black dog is the problem? What about the white dog, the yellow dog, red dog? I mean, what the difference? Abu Dhar here answer, he said, O son of my brother, I asked the messenger of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him as you ask me and he said the black dog is the devil and you Muslims you say to us why we believe Muhammad is a false prophet by the way just today as we speak 26 brothers in Christ they are killed in the in in in, in Niger. The the nice beautiful follower of Muhammad they attack a church the same as they did last week. Last week I think they killed nineteen. Today twenty six people. That because this religion is anti human, anti even dogs I mean even dogs are not safe from the hands of this cult the Prophet he ordered to kill all the dogs in the city of Al Medina and the city of Mecca do you know that the city of Mecca and the city of Medina is zero dogs because Muslims will kill any dog immediately if he enter the city somebody might say well, the black stone, the Muslims, they kiss the black stone. So how come they consider black as bad, yet they kiss the black stone? My friend, my friend, listen carefully. Muhammad, he believed and he taught his people. That the black stone is white. And the outside of the black stone is black because of sin of mankind. <clears throat> but the black stone itself is white. It is sin who make anything black, according to Muhammad. It was narrated by Ibn Abbas that the messenger of Allah said the black stone descended from paradise and it was whiter than milk. It was what? It was whiter than milk. So what happened? Look what he said. Then it was blackened by the sin of the children of Adam. So black is a color you own or you earn when you sin. The more you sin, the more you get darker, according to Muhammad. And as you see, this is the hate in front of you. This is not my statement. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just reading for you what is in the screen. Can the Muslims say this is not true? Can they say this is weak? No, they cannot. <laughs> Can they? Huh? Even Muhammad, when he speak about the river of a sperm Allah will give him in heaven, the Muslim they claim that this is a sper this is a river of uh, of water. Even he describe him as so white. I mean, even uh, you know, 
Will ihr sehen? Right. In the Quran, we mentioned that many times. As an example, in chapter 27, verse number 82, in the interpretation of the the animal, the, the beast will come from the ground. It says that Allah will send the beast, and this beast is going to hit the unbeliever in his face with the stick of, uh, 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 with the ring of Solomon, and he will make him black. And he will hit the believer with the staff of Moses, and he will make him white. That is Islam, my friend. This is the religion of discrimination. And a Muslim have no right to speak about... I, I don't know even how you can be a black person and you are a Muslim. How you can follow such a man who taught too much hate against black people. How, for God's sake, you can do that? Read carefully with me. Again, everything we show you is coming from their own translation, their own website, their own statement, their Quran. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just sharing with your knowledge, my knowledge with you. All right. We go to verse number 82 first. This is supposedly about a beast will come from the ground and this beast is going to carry the stick of Moses and the ring of cinnamon. It will strike the nose of the disbeliever with the ring and will make the face of the believer bright with the staff. Translation is false. It doesn't say really bright. It says white as a star. Let us continue to prove it to you. If you go down here, it says, that this beast it will bring out with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman and there will be no believer left without its making a white spot in his face so the believer Allah will make a white spot in his face which will spread until his face is shining white this is what it says shining white person as a result and there will be no disbeliever like me and you left without making a black spot in his face which will spread until his face is black as a result so based in the cult of islam the bad people always will be black and the good people always will be white and this is before the judgment day allah will divide mankind to two colors black and white now if the muslims are listening and you don't agree that this is racism this is what then why we will be black and white and why the good ones is the white what about making the good ones the black we showed you that this is exactly what muhammad he taught and we showed you the the hadith from ibn kathir if you remember here we go it's still open we can share it you see the stories of the Prophet, the book of Ibn Kathir, read with me. I'm not making things from my pocket. Do you see it, Abdul? Do you see the name of the book? Page number 53. I have nothing to do with it. That is Islam. And what make it more hilarious that Muslims they try to say that Christianity teach racism. Which is very funny and kind of madness. I hope I didn't answer uh, the Muslims they uh, they make their claim. And I noticed for some reason, I think maybe because it is a summer time coming, that not many people online like we have uh, in YouTube 93 people only I mean why, why is that look like because the weather is good so less and less people are coming in YouTube so I'm going to check out and see maybe I need to uh, make less videos and make short ones better than long ones as long as not many are coming online look like you know summer always as usual actually nothing new 
in summer people they go out weather is nice etc good for you no problem so I will try to make short videos not long ones to answer people and not a long broadcast until the winter come back again all right and actually that will give me a chance maybe to go because I am invited somewhere to do some kind of work too so maybe in a, in two months or three months from now I will be able to go before the summer is over so we will make shorter videos and guys if my videos disappear from this channel always you will find those videos in patreon which mean I did not delete my videos and nobody deleted my videos my videos are located in patreon so if you want to see my last video or a video you are looking for you can go to patreon and click in it and you can find the link from there all right uh, and when I say better you doesn't mean only those who they are donating they can receive this is in the front page I never made a private video for a private donor my videos is always for free you donate to me or not it doesn't matter all right I post in Facebook in the same time yes but most most of the videos you will find them uh, because sometimes you know you are lazy you don't want to post in every page you have you know what I mean uh, so like you know today I was planning to broadcast but in the beginning we did not we were not successful uh, so I could not post in battery and I would do it right now actually as we speak uh, but always usually before I start broadcasting I post in battery so you can go always to patreon and you can find the video you are looking for uh, uh, I have my reason to make my videos unlisted in YouTube maybe later I can explain to you uh, all my videos are still there nothing changed and for sure the, the Muslim they try to take some videos down as much as they can uh, but for me I'm trying to do that because um, you know let me explain to you I keep saying to those Christians I don't know if you guys are Christian or not please download my videos please I mean why you are waiting for me and now you ask me what is your videos why you don't have them why I have to fight alone why I, am I the only Christian in this earth you see if I'm a Muslim and I ask the Muslim to download my videos you will find my videos like 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 rain everywhere if I am a Muslim if my name is a, a, a Muslim prince I will not have 90 people watching me live now in YouTube I will have 9,000 at least that is the truth Muslims they believe in a cult but they sponsor their cult Christian they have the best ever they have the Messiah but they don't care they don't care otherwise explain to me what's happening why I keep saying a reference how many hours I spend every day and then after after I finish the video five minutes after a guy he says to me can you give me the reference which you showed us in the video so what I was doing in the video then If you open if if I open my my Facebook you will not believe it how silly the questions they come to me Christian Prince in the previous video you answered this Abdul about this but he is saying the same question I said okay well you don't answer him the same answer as long as I answered him already what do you want me to do and Moses you don't want to uh, you don't want to salute me my friend just help us help us to do something better try guys we need to do better work I am willing to go to churches for free for free for free for the sake of God I don't want you to pay me a penny if I go to your church don't give me a penny I will I will I will buy my sandwich I will pay for my hotel don't pay me but still Christians don't care if I'm a Muslim they will invite me to conferences they will you know go and see what they do with the uh, Shabir Ali and Nu'man Khan and all those potatoes and they are potatoes they swallow their tongue when they are talking uh, 
Anyway. And the funny, the Muslim, they think I have an army behind me. I'm serious. They think I have like, man, you know, this guy, he have like a secretary. He have an organization. They don't know. They have no idea. Nobody have an idea anyway. Anyway, God is good. And I am victorious by his name. You people help me, you don't help me, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? But for me, my, 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 my concern is, why, why you don't want to work for your salvation? Christians will not be called a Christian, for they are just watching. Christians have to be involving. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will. The Messiah one day will ask you, how many, how many people you brought to me? What you will say? What you will say for God's sake? You will say, I was doing barbecue with my family. I was watching a Christian prince. That's not enough. Who is a Christian prince? He don't even, who is this Christian prince? Christian prince, he work, and I will check him out by myself. Hold Tell me about yourself now, what you did. If you spend your life and you became 70 and 80 years old, but you could not bring one person to Christ, so what you did in your life? You will tell him, I built a house, I bought a car, I went on vacation. We need to do the fruits with the Messiah he asked us to do. He said that from their fruits, you shall know them. So where is your fruit? Go right now and search about videos about Christianity and videos about Islam in YouTube. You will find the Muslims are flooding YouTube. Why? Numbers, we are a lot more bigger than them in numbers. We can't even compare. Why? Islam is a stupid religion. It's very easy to debunk, very easy to destroy. I never saw stupid, ignorant religion easy to destroy or easier than Islam. Show anyone this story in front of you and he will see that this is stupid. God, he will make people black and white. You do not need even to discuss. The debate is over. Do we have any Muslim here have a comment want to say? Anyone? So what I will do, I think I'm going to, to change the way we do our podcast as long as we have uh, the, the summer is coming and a small number are coming online. So I think it's better to make a short video and short video not necessarily to be at 4.30. As you see yesterday, I, I made a video at, at 2, I think 2.30 a.m. in the morning. All right. And if you go, nobody watch it. Go, go and check how many, how many, how many people they saw the video I made yesterday. Let's see. Just to show you, if we go there, <clears throat> you know, if somebody else will be really, uh, we will, will give up. I mean, 1,000 people watch my video. Why? I'm, if I make unboxing about iPhone, I will get 10,000 video uh, uh, view. <laughs> 1,000, why? What I did? I mean, is the video is not uh, qualified to be listened to? Isn't it short? Is it short of knowledge? Wasn't really horrible for the Abdul? Why I have 1,000? Look at this. I have 1,035 of you. I mean, why? Give me a reason.
And the funny I noticed that people, they watch the last video, the one before it, they don't care for it. It's like an old one, you know, they like fresh fruits, you know, like, this is an old one, this is from yesterday. I mean, why I want to watch it today, huh? Which means most of people, they are just coming for entertainment. They are coming just to chat and, you know, hey, how are you? How are you doing? How are you doing, brother? I'm doing fine. How is your family? I'm doing great. Hey, Tony, do you have pizza today? 1,035. Why? Go watch it and see. It's a priceless video. Nothing makes sense. I don't know really what I should do. I don't know. If I if I type right now, just give you an example of how mad this earth is. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I, I'm not speaking against any person in person. Look, I just searched bikini unboxing. Look what I found. Bikini unboxing. Okay. This is what people watch. And look at the numbers. 30,000 in one day. Gold body suite unboxing. Unboxing with velvet skirt. 20K thousand. I mean, 294, 294 thousand. Leah unboxing. I don't know what is Leah. All what, she, all what those women need to do is to wear a short skirt, short bikini, and put themselves in the camera and you will find tons of thousands. Look at this. 798,000. Use the full bikini. This is what people want. And I don't have that. I don't. Nobody want knowledge. Nobody care for knowledge. And this is exactly why Muhammad he promised a lot of sex. Because he knew how perverted the man is. He knew exactly, the devil he knew exactly what people want. What God and what lecturer you want to give me and what knowledge you are talking about. That is what needed unboxing of a bikini <laughs> you know people are getting killed Christians are getting killed in Africa and people are talking about reviewing shampoo people are slaughtered everywhere the world is going crazy. Tens of thousands of children are used for, you know, human trafficking and sex. And people are busy with the uh, American uh, best talent. I mean, I don't know. I, sometimes I feel like I'm coming from different galaxy. I don't believe. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, like, I, I'm coming from somewhere. I don't know. I think uh, I, I dropped from the chimney, as my grandmother, she said. All right yeah trust me if you if you appear in the bikini then you will see how uh, people they like to see faces first of all they like to see faces so if you if in order to get a lot of a view you have to put a camera on you but I'm not interested really of myself because it's not me my face what will make you understand it is the reference I showed you it's the knowledge I share with you but this is how the world is. Skype is closed. I think, yeah, Skype is closed. Let me see. Let me open it. Hold on, my friend. Oh. Yeah, I will log in. <clears throat> 
anyway, you know, God is good. And I always receive emails from people who left Islam and, they, you know, so things really, uh, you know, I, I am satisfied with my work. But I'm not satisfied with people work. You know, we all of, all of us, we should be uh, the body of Christ and we, we should share his glory together. So why you don't want to hear the, you know, like earn the blessing, which is, you know, a chance to earn. Because your life will be taken from you tomorrow, maybe today. Maybe you go to sleep, you never wake up. You see, people are worried and concerned about their retirement plan. But they are not concerned about Judgment Day. Where you will be asked and you did nothing. Nothing, what you did. All right, we are now in Skype. I think we have a Muslim trying to call. Do we have an Abdul? Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Anyone? All right. Anyway, uh, Skype is open if uh, if uh, if a Muslim would like to call. Uh, all right. Looked like somebody want to invite me to his church or something. All right. No problem. <coughs> uh, you know, it's a great. It's a great happiness when you help somebody to come and to know Christ. I can't explain to you how much I have a stress sometime because of what I do, but how much happy I feel when somebody says to me, thank you very much, I am out of Islam, I want to know and learn about the Messiah. There is nothing can describe that. I remember once I was speaking to a bishop, a bishop, he is proud about himself, wearing the clothes of a priest. He said to me, what do you get from this? I said, what do you mean? He said, what do you get from what you do like this? So I said to him, uh, you know, how many, how many people they left Islam because of you? How, how long you are, for how long you are working as a monk or a bishop? He said, oh, most, most of my life. So I said, okay, how many Muslims they accept the Christ because of your work? He said, none. He said, can you ask me the same question? Do you like to ask me the same question? Ask me. This is how silly some they are. What you are getting from this? This is what Christianity is about. He's a bishop and he's asking me why you are doing this. So some Christians, they think Christianity is about going to church and doing a service. And repeating a certain prayer, the same as the pagan, and going home. Some Christians, they think that Christianity is a social club, where we go and meet with the friends and family, and we drink and we eat and we go back home. Some people, they think the church is the same as a market, the same as the one who Jesus kicked them out of the temple. So they made the church a place of business. But there is a real Christians 
who they are the one who bring people to Christ and those are the one do count there is billions of Christians it is the biggest belief in this earth but not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father this is my warning to you all of us we are sinner I am a sinner and you are a sinner I'm not saying I'm a good guy and I am the perfect guy I'm the angel all of us we are sinners so the salvation the salvation people they say to you falsely that you will not be saved by doing good work that is a misquoting of the Bible for Jesus said it clearly and everyone says to me Lord Lord but the one who do 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 his will so doing the will of the Messiah is not only to believe in him but to do walk as he walk do as he do to be a follower from their fruits the fruits are not required by many churches they say to you it's not required that's false a tree without fruits will be cut off and thrown in the hellfire this is the word of my Lord Jesus how you can be of the fruit of a Christ if you yourself you don't have a fruit from their fruits you will know them not from their worship we are not the same as Muslims who bow down stand up and go down stand up the Messiah he spoke about those people who pray in the corners for they are hypocrites and actually he forbid us from doing that he said if you want to pray you go to your closet and you pray which means nobody see you Christianity is the opposite 100 80 degree of the cult of Islam the Muslims are encouraged to pray in the street because it's a hypocrite religion the Muslims they speak about their fasting because they, it's a hypocrite religion every Muslim will tell you I'm fasting I'm tired I'm fasting man don't talk to me I'm him fasting the Messiah he said if you fast you wash your face uh, don't show the Muslims the people like you to be like saying the Muslims and the pagans and the hypocrites you know I'm fasting and my lips is dry and I'm tired you wash your face as nothing happening and nobody why you want to share with people that you are fasting a Muslim he is rife now in TV and he says sorry brothers and sisters we have to finish the program because now it's time for the prayer we have everybody have to know he's going to pray for he's a hypocrite we don't want to be the same as they are learn learn how to be Christian and by the way there's a lot of wonderful Christians who really help and uh, etc uh, like I have people who support in donation people who support me I cannot I cannot say uh, I'm not getting support and there's no good Christians around uh, and I cannot say there is no Christians are copying my videos this is not true but it's still we are short in number there is a lot of wonderful Christians are really doing their best and maybe they are better than me so the plan is from you know uh, as as long summer is coming I'm thinking to do maybe once or twice a week long broadcast like this maybe uh, which which day guys you think is good where people stay home let us make a let us make a research here what is the best day where people they stay home more so we can do long broadcast and the rest of the days we do short videos anyone can help what is the best day Tuesday Saturday Sunday Saturday or Friday look like majority until now saying Saturday 
Yeah, Monday is good for those who do haircut business. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So you think Sunday is the best? Okay, let's do this. I am going to make, I'm going to make a form, you know, like you can make a, a vote for uh, things in my page in Patreon. And I will list days and you guys you choose. And whatever, who, who, who the, uh, the highest number in the list of a choice is going to be the day where we do a uh, broadcast. So let us see, let us see here. Okay, make a pause. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let us see how to do it. Add an option. Okay, I will do it after we finish. And you guys, then you, you go and vote. And maybe by next week, we can decide which day is better, is best. All right. And we will see. Why not every, not Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday? No, it's not about, you know, doing, I'm doing my mission anyway. If you think if I say Saturday and etc., I was going to be on, I will make videos almost every day, maybe two videos every day, maybe three. <laughs> this is not the point. The point is, like now, in the last 24 hours, how many videos I made? Three. I'm not a lazy person. I'm not complaining about my work. This is not the point. I, I always, when I receive a question, I feel that this is important. I make a video immediately, even if it is after middle of the night. The same as I did yesterday, 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the point is, we want to gather here and uh, take your questions live, uh, answer those who have a question live, and this is the point of the live thing. Otherwise, you guys, you can still send me uh, uh, questions in Facebook or in Patreon, and if I did not make a video about it, I will make it a video. Short video is very good, actually, because it's easier for people to download and to share. And that is going to make it easier for you from the process of cutting off videos and, you know. Yeah, this is why if I make a, a you know, live broadcast, uh, maybe, you see, maybe Saturday, Saturday is good for those who live in different let us say territory because Saturday as an example in the Philippines is already uh, Sunday in uh, USA right so maybe if we do it uh, Sunday early Sunday early that will be Sunday night for Philippine and Asia when I say Philippine I mean people in Asia and it's going to be uh, evening or let us say uh, close to go to evening in Europe is going to be a, a daytime for those who they are in USA which means we can get all everybody in one broadcast all right so maybe Sunday maybe Sunday is the best time so shall we agree on Sunday this way everybody can let us see what the time Sunday uh, let us see like now hold on <clears throat> let us go to the phone see the clock okay hmm all right maybe maybe saturday because saturday let us say if we make a broadcast saturday at noon time usa that will be about 6 p.m in europe 
and that will be 12 middle of the night in Asia hmm. so maybe we should do it if we do it Sunday or Saturday we should do it early like morning time what do you think guys of morning time USA is that good what if we do it like uh, let us say uh, 10 a.m. in the morning in USA or 11 yeah well we can do it Saturday actually this is a good idea because Saturday as you said people they can sleep the second day if they stay late so if we do Saturday let us see here uh, Saturday yeah even if it's late we can start a little bit early for those who they are in Asia and then even if we stay for a couple of hours still people they can do what they need to do so let us say we will start from now doing Saturday uh, starting from the coming Saturday uh, Eastern time What about 11.30 Eastern Time or 10.30? What do you think? Saturday. This way those who spend the night like a week for long in Friday watching movies or etc. They can still join us. So maybe we can do it Saturday at 11 o'clock. Good? Or, or after 11, 12. Tell me guys. What is best? Saturday is the day now. Which which time? Twelve? One? Two PM? Okay, I'm going to make a poll in Batterion and I will choose the time. I will say I choose time between those and you guys vote. The 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 higher number of voters, the winner. Deal? What do you think? Hey Tamara, she's saying anytime. Tamara, anytime. See? That's it. So guys, Saturday anytime. I don't know which clock is that. Which country they go by anytime? Let me check. Let me check. This is, I think, this is somewhere in. Yeah, I think this is. I, I'm trying to fig figure out which country they go. They go by the clock. It's called any time. Um, any time. I'm looking at the map. I could not find it. Yeah, I don't know where this uh, any time clock. This is. I think it's coming from the Quran. <laughs> You know, there is something about about Eastern, the Eastern countries, like Middle Eastern countries where I'm coming from. For us, everything is anytime. You know, because of the cult of Islam, everything is based on Inshallah. Inshallah means Allah is willing. And because Allah is willing, the clean, the, the clean never done. The streets are dirty. The electricity is not working. Cars are not working. The bus is always late. The train never come. Airplane never show up. And the police is not there when you want them, and the judge is corrupt because Allah is willing. Inshallah. The whole country run by Inshallah. Electricity, machines, cars, everything, Inshallah. Even the news. When the guy he do the weather news, he say, Brother and sisters, Inshallah, tomorrow we might have some rain. And Inshallah, if Allah willing, if Allah willing, we might have some wind. And um, inshallah, if this has happened, then we will have a very screwed day. They don't even dare to say the news as it is because they, they are afraid that people, they will say he's predicting the time. He claimed to be a prophet, they will kill him. So he have to put the word inshallah between every two words. Inshallah, by the will of Allah, alhamdulillah, if Allah want, as you know, is Allah want, tomorrow we might have a cloud and a wind speed of 20 miles an hour. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, I remember. 
how it is in the Middle East. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so guys, uh, did we reach to agreement about what time Saturday? Come on, come on, give me time. I'm trying to be an Arabian democratic. This has never happened before, by the way. This is against our nature. I mean, imagine we are asking people to vote. What's wrong? Something wrong. 11 o'clock, 11, 11 a.m. Mm. Yeah, you see, because if we make it late, it's going to be late for those who they are in Asia. They will be dead asleep, you know. We we have to be fair and share with them their, uh, you know, our podcast. Uh, yeah, if we do it, okay, let's do with this, so we can be fair. Anyway, because those who they are in America, if you if you wake up uh, late, I mean, how late you can be more than uh, at twelve p.m. You know, I mean sleeping all day uh, or if you have busy business to work to do so uh, uh, in order to reach to everybody and this is the whole point uh, we cannot reach to all the to everybody anyway but because it's Saturday anyway people who they are from far east still they can stay with us late and sleep maybe after two hours and then we continue so I think it's good idea if we start uh, Saturday at uh, 2 p.m. What do you think? How many here is from Asia? Let us see. How many of you from Asia? I think now very few because now it's very late already. Yeah, very few. All right, let us start this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock. Is that good? Two o'clock? What do you think? 2 p.m. New York time. And if you stay late, anyway, second day is Sunday, so you will be off. Good? Okay, so take a note please. Starting from the coming Saturday, we will have a live broadcast. Uh, this is a fixed day. Now, if I can do it during the week, I will do again. And during the week, I will make short videos for sure, which means I'm not going to stay without making videos like once a week. This is not, <laughs> I cannot do that actually. I can't stop myself from doing from from answering refuting the Abdul. So I might do a live broadcast. It's going to be short video. When I say short video, it's going to be live too, unless YouTube stop me from doing that. So uh, I will make short videos during the week. So you are welcome to join anytime. All right, just be sure, guys, that you're uh, you are subscribed to my Facebook, and because now, like now, we are doing Facebook and and uh, YouTube in the same time. Uh, subscribe, so you will be notified when I make a short video and it's going to be a live chat anyway even the short video is not going to be just a video I make I don't like you see I don't need to prepare myself to make a video I prefer just with a topic a Muslim he says something in Facebook this is usually how I, I make my topic I don't even think about it I open my Facebook a few minutes before I start my broadcast I look what the Muslims are posting I find something interesting to answer or somebody send an email from you and I make a video about it. So until I see you guys in the coming Saturday, Saturday at 2 o'clock, let us make it 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. New York time. All right. Uh, starting from this coming Saturday and during the week, you are welcome to join me anytime I have a short live broadcast. But short live broadcast is going to be short as we said, so people they can download easy and they can share it with their friends. Today is, we are in the middle of the week already, so soon we will have Saturday coming. All right? Do we have any question? 
this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. Please take a note. Write in, write it next to your. If you are a person who is, who have a short memory, write it and put a sticker in your computer. Saturday at 2 p.m. New York time. No, during the week I will do live podcast. During the week I will do live podcast. It might be 4:30, the same as every day, but it's going to be short. Because as you see, not many people online. I think this is because it's a summertime. Always in summertime, less and less people they go online to, to join chat. Weather forces people to be on the computer. Outside is nice and sunny, etc. So why not go and it's it's healthy to go outside. Don't stick next to the computer all day. Right? I changed the channel, channel not because it's my wish. As you see, the, 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 the Mohammedan are chasing me. What I will do? You see, if it's a different person, by now I should have a million subscribers. At least. But because they try to silence me. So what I do? That is not my choice. If you want to know about sexual behavior of Muhammad, I have a book is going to be published within no more than a week, I believe. Uh, uh, this book is called Sex and Allah. Sex and Allah. The whole book is about sexuality in Islam. So you will, and I believe that this book will be a top sale for Muslims because Muslims, they love anything have to do with sex. All right. Right. We will see. Yeah, we will have three books will be published this coming week. The German book, which is a translation for the Quran and science in depth, which means exposure to the false lies of science in Islam. In the same time, there's a lot of tons of stories exposing the stupidity of Islam and the fairy tales of Muhammad. This is in German. And then the sex and Allah, this is going to be two volumes. Uh, value number one and value number two. Yeah, actually the cover is uh, almost here. Let me see if I can share it with you. But actually it's not really final. I'm working in it. Uh, let me see. Where is the cover? Where is the cover? Yeah, I'm working in the cover. See, the, the cover is kind of... Uh, Um, you know, you have to match the topic with the, with the cover. Let me share it with you so you can give you an idea if, if you guys approve it or not. Let us see here. Oh, open recent. All right, I'm still working in it, but I will share with you. Uh, look with me, guys, and tell me what do you think. Six and Allah. This is starting from the top. I cannot show you the whole image in, in the screen, so I have to scroll down. So the, the name is Six and Allah. And then we go down. There's a picture. Here is like, if you see the, the, the background, is like a mirage. Actually, this is a picture I took myself in the ocean. And I actually, I took this picture in purpose to make it as a part for my book. All right. I know that's, I need a picture about such a thing. 
So here there's a, a sea, and then there's a mosque. And then if we go down, there's a verse from the Quran, chapter 55, verse number 56, where it says, wherein both will be those females restrain their gallants, their gallants uh, upon their husbands, whom no man or jinn made them, you know, bleed from losing their virginity, etc. This is a chapter of 55, verse number 56, and this is a woman, she, she is laying down in the beach, and here you will see in the background, the Arabic text is written. So what do you think? Does it fit with the topic? No, I cannot afford to hire a professional designer. If everything I want to do, I will hire somebody, I will never even write a book. You know, the money I make hardly, it's just make me live, let us say. I am not in the stage of hiring people. I cannot afford it. All right. So, and anyway, you know, the cover is not really what is going to make the book good or bad. It's what is inside. And I made it red because this is a red, this is the red, uh, what they call it? The red district. Right? This is the red district of Allah. Uh, so I hope you would change the head of the font title. Why? Actually, I like this font because it's big, clear. What, Guys, what do you think the font of the title? Because if we may, if we say six and Islam, Allah, is, Allah escape. We have to blame Allah. Isn't Allah is the one who made those promises? Islam is can be anything. Just make it a straight. Hit hit the head of the snake, my friend. The head of the snake. Yeah, somebody is saying we make it Allah, which means he is saying here. Let us do that. Maybe life we can't do that. <coughs> uh, for some reason, it's not allowed in me. But you know, uh, if I do that, that will make. Uh, I don't want to change the name of the book. He is saying making it like this, Allah. That's a good idea, actually. But still, I prefer to do it Allah right away. It's okay. Anyway, uh, I hope that uh, people will like it, and it's a, it is the first book of its kind. There is nobody ever, you know, wrote anything about this topic before. So this is the first book ever speaking about such a thing, exposing the impact of sexuality on this cult. For this cult, actually, everything about it is about sex. What is Islam? Sex. What is my reward in heaven? Sex. This is why you see the concentration of stories about, you know, uh, Quran concentrate in, in three major things, let us say. Having women for sex, women you never met, you never know their names, all of them, they are made just for sex, pre-made for you, just to sleep with them. Then the Quran describe how much you, what, what you will eat in your belly. And then the Quran describe the, the 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 wealth you will have in the heaven so all what islam is about not something ritual it's about something physical and involve sex and money sexuality with the children sexuality uh, uh, with women uh, uh, you know there is nothing real there even even the muslims in the heaven of islam they will not even worship their god there is no more prayer nobody will pray in heaven so uh, this religion focus for a reason on sexuality because Satan always try to tempt you and try to control you by your desire. You see the Messiah, he always uh, 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 take us in the direction to fight our temptation. Islam is a religion, make you a slave of your temptation. The Muslim, they say to you, Islam is against adultery, but the fact Islam promote that man can have sex with four women. 
that is not only adultery this is four time adultery and not only that not only four women you can divorce and remarry as many as you wish which not only like saying like okay you marry four women and you stay with them until you die no those women you can replace them anytime you can have a new brand new brand of women you can have you know and, and Muhammad he was encouraging even Muslim men to have sex with the little girls virgins as he called them so the prophet of Islam and Islam is 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 based on sexuality this is why I believe that this topic is very important and I decide to write about it now uh, we will publish this one and I will go back and start working with the other book which is called the roots of the Quran or the roots of Islam it's a very complicated book this is why I stop writing about it because it may give me a lot of headache you see when you are not in the Middle East uh, you will have a hard time to find reference um, you know I, I, there's many things in my head but when I try to quote them I can just quote and I say from my memory I have to get the page number you know not just the name of the book you cannot say in the book of etc it says etc you have to quote exactly the word and you have to quote exact page number and I'm suffering with the from shortage uh, shortage of uh, of reference uh, books not all the books Arabic books are online very small number of it in online uh, yeah, when when it's published, I'm going uh, when we publish it officially, I'm going to post in Facebook, in Twitter, in YouTube. I will let everybody know. All right, don't worry. And then uh, we need your help to promote it. And by the way, there is there is we have a, another problem. Uh, as an example, you know, I have a I have a book in French, correct? My French book, the the secret, the Prophet Arab. This one, very few people they are reading the book. Why? Because nobody from those who speak French help us to promote the book. So if you are a person who speaks French, please post the book with your friends so they will know about it. The the you know the French book, there is a the Dutch book, there is a Swedish book. Uh, because nobody, you know, I, I don't speak Swedish, I don't speak French, I don't speak uh, Dutch. So who is going to tell people about this book? Only those who speak the language. So if you speak those languages, any of those languages, help us to promote and to tell. Okay. Uh, Call uh, if you want to buy Islamic books. There is millions. I mean, you will go, we will go bankruptcy. But if you are asking about yourself, you want to buy what? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I have a lot of books in the Middle East, but how you can get it here? <coughs> There's a book, I wish I can have it. I used to have it in my library uh, in the Middle East, but I, I don't know where, where, how they can find it. It's called An Interview with a Genie. An Interview with a Genie. This book is hilarious. I wish I can get it and translate it. Just translate it without touch, without even a comment from me. You guys will die from laughing. An Interview with a Genie. Unbelievable! First time I got this book, I remember I bought this book. I, I bought it from the street. You know, it's like uh, the cover is ripped off. You know, like there's books you sell in the street. You know what I mean? So I was like, uh, I think I was, I don't know, like I was a kid, teenage. So it's an interview with the genie, huh? Interview with the genie? What is that? So I took it home. I bought it for very cheap. You know. And I start. I was dying from laughing. I remember my mom. She said to me, "Are you are you going crazy? Why you are let, uh, sitting alone and laughing?" <laughs> I said, "When you have time, read this book, and you will see." <laughs> and then my mom, she started reading the book. She died from laughing too. And I said to her the same. I said, "What's wrong with you? Are you going crazy? Why you are laughing like this?" <laughs> Interview with the genie. I'm with you. Those people, they have they have a madness. They have a mental illness. Uh, <clears throat> anyway uh, actually you know what I want somebody of you to save this link for me who want to help me so later if we speak about this uh, hadith 
uh, about uh, because sometimes we have hard time to find it in English. Uh, let me short. Let me shorten the link. Okay, you know, for me, I don't really save in my bookmark because if I want to save everything I know, it's endless. Let's see. Uh, Google shorten link. Okay, shortener. Unable to create short URL. Why? Okay, let's try again. You see, this is the link about uh, it says enable. Hmm. Why is that? Let me see if I post it for you in the text if it's going to work. <coughs> Hello. Hey, my friend. How are you? Hey, CP. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, there is somebody in the chat, uh, Hunter, whoever it is. I don't, I don't know him really, but he's saying that he knows some people that know graphic design that are, uh, I guess, in their business or have access to those type of tools. And if he could get a hold to, or if you could post somehow your cover beforehand, he could put you in touch with some of those people uh it's not worth it i think the book is fine you know i don't wanna you know it's a it's a cover and i think the the book cover was fine isn't it i mean what what you would do about it? i mean what you would do the only thing you can do if somebody is good in art like hand art he can draw like a picture of heaven of allah females etc that would be interesting uh, otherwise uh, graphic is just a graphic you know? yeah well, ultimately, it's your book. So, um, if you're the one that has to be comfortable with the cover or what's in it, but still, I just wanted to relay his message because he was trying to get your attention oh, okay. to to offer that connection. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, yeah, my my personal take on the cover, uh, it, well, it, it's kind of funny to me. I thought the image of the woman at the bottom is a little racy. Racy? And, Why? Uh, well, it, it, it's 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 got a clear sexual tone, which I guess that's what you're going for. Well, this is the point. Yeah. Well, but it, it it's kind of racist, sexual to the point. Uh, well, it's well, it's not quite pornographic, but it kind of takes you there. Well, this is and the point. If you um, <laughs> trying to offer it to people. Who like um approaching it from a scary type point of view? The picture might turn them off a bit. Um, that may not be what you're going for. Hmm. Yeah. I understand what you are saying, but you know, <clears throat> the the whole the whole book is about sexuality, and what is inside is disgusting, million time more than I mean, a picture is nothing. This is something people they see in the beach every day. Well, it's yeah. not like it's not like a woman; she is uh, totally naked, and even the picture is not really clear. Um, so, if somebody want to think that this book is not valuable because of this picture, well, this is his business. Because the point is, this book it is about sex and Allah. I mean, the name is not about uh, how to grow a family. How to succeed with your marriage how to fight divorce this book is about sex as simple as that yeah well, yeah that's what it's about well that, that was just my impression of it yeah um, i don't know it's i i i, I appreciate your uh, your opinion and uh, people they can say what they think too i mean uh, let me know if because if it is not really good i can change it no problem but i i, I you know for me my idea that uh, the whole book is exposing sexuality in Islam, so why we would not have this picture there? Yeah, well, I don't think it's a question of, of good or not. Um, the question, it's a question of does it communicate what you want to communicate? See, if, if the cover says what you want to say, you know, then it's fine. You know, it may not be racy enough depending on what you want to communicate, but you're the only one who really knows that. You know, 
I'm just saying my opinion of it when I saw it. Yeah. And let you know that's what came across my mind. So you can take my little two cents for whatever it's worth and measure that against what you are trying to get across. You know, if that's the point you want to get across, then that's the point. Now, um, I can imagine some Muslims would be offended by it, but you know, they're offended by everything. Who okay. um, I will, <laughs> well, somehow I got a feeling that of all the people on the earth that do care, you care the least. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just my opinion. I may be mistaken, but I think it, that I think that's a pretty good guess. Um, still, uh, I can imagine that uh, that will make Muslims quite upset. Actually, and that's even better. Because, you see, the the book of Salman Rushdie did not become a book well known unless the you know because uh, because the Muslim we were not upset. Uh, you know, actually, uh, I wish tomorrow that Osama bin Laden, if he was alive, would carry my book and say, "Look at the Christian Prince, what he wrote." Yeah, that will be my happy day. Now that is exactly what I was thinking and what, what I was about to say, you know, like satanic versus mad, but <clears throat> well, you already answered my question. I was going to ask, how would you feel about if, if Muslims reacted like that to your book, like they reacted to the satanic verses? And that, it was a big fuss. That would be and, wonderful. Happy about that. No, would, I didn't that, say I'm busy with spanking happy about. That would be wonderful because, you know, uh, actually, you see, uh, as an example, my German book is doing a lot better than other books because the Muslims are so upset from the German book. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. So the more upset they are, the better it does. Good. You know, yeah. uh, the, the more they go against it, the more it, the book is successful. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Like to say the satanic verses. Nobody would have read it. You see, this is why uh, Shabir Ali, he bought my books, but he never opened his mouth about them. He's smart. Because if he spoke against them, he knew that would, that would encourage more people to read it. Yeah. Well, and that would, that would just encourage more people to talk to you as well. Yeah. No. So he's smart. He decided to keep mute, keep shut. And not to say a word, and for sure he could not find anything against it anyway. I mean, if everything is there is reference, is true. You know? Yeah, but again, CP, that's that's really well. I mean, I guess ultimately it is the point. The fact that it's true. But um, you know, I heard a politician say, you know, the truth matters, but how we fight lies matters more. You know, so if say, for instance, you put this book out or any one of your books, and they get into a satanic verses type hoopla and it's all over the news and all over the press and who is this guy and in every country and we're going to kill him and you know bounces if you know who he is and blah 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 then news outlets are going to be talking to you and interviewing you and every time they ask you about your book they give you a chance to defend it mm. you know in front of the worldwide press you know, which okay. <laughs> is exactly what well exactly what you want. You know. Well, you know, I, I I will try to make a new cover, and we compare, and we will see. We will make a vote if people like the which one they decide to take. Uh, uh, you know, I chose the name Six and Allah to make it direct. Mm -hmm. No need to explain, and same time the picture of a mosque. And there is a sand, and there's like a mirage, which means it's it's uh, it's false. All those promises is just fantasy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just to uh, to uh, to control your mind, and to make you a slave of uh, of a fake god. Uh, this is why I thought this uh, this picture would be a good picture. But anyway, we will see. I will try to make uh, maybe two more uh, uh, covers, and see which one is the best to be uh, for the book. Let me ask you this: For the picture of the woman that, that you used, the silhouette, is that the only picture of a woman that you used? Yeah. Okay. Because if 
actually this woman she was she was on the beach when I took the picture she said uh, she you know uh, you know I'm, I'm taking a picture of the beach and then she uh -huh. said she said is that the picture you are taking of me or of the beach I said of the, in the beach until now but if you want I will take a picture of you <laughs> because I need a picture for a book <laughs> and she uh -huh. said sure sure are you sure you want to put my picture in the book I said yeah she get excited I said but I will not put all of you I will put like uh, a part of you she said, no problem, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know who even was she. Anyway, so she was so happy. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, you know, I cannot, I mean, uh, you, you see, if you, this book deserves actually a naked woman because this is a naked religion about sex. But I cannot go that far, you know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this is the lowest exposure I can do, like legs of women. Women, and have, she have to be white, as you know, because you, I, I wish I can make her see through. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I have a camera, like X-ray camera, and I take a picture for her in the beach, and we and like we take all the all the way to the marrow of the bones, as Muhammad he said, you know. But we yeah. cannot do that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you have to give it to the people at a pace that that they can absorb, you know. Um, just because it's true, <laughs> you know. Just just because it's true, yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean that that the people can accept it. You know, they sometimes they have to take a small bite before they can deal with the mouthful. So, do, do you remember the pictures I showed before about uh, a woman in the X-ray machine? Yes, I remember that. I wish I can use those. Actually, this is a really a perfect one. <laughs> you know, but they have they might have a copyright. With you know. With, 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 you have to use a picture as not involve anyone, uh, you know, violating anything. You, can, you know how it is, you know. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can come with better ideas, but uh, you have to then to buy certain pictures. And maybe some people, they like to have a certain more decent cover, as we say. But nothing about this book is decent except the reference and what is inside as, uh, you know, uh, ideas but the promises are not decent the heaven of this guy is not decent it's a filthy you will see the f word as simple as that so if somebody is going to be offended by saying the f word don't buy the book i have the f word i'm saying from now i have the f word inside because that's what it says i'm not going to translate it to make it look nicer yeah but, but <laughs> when, when it deals with islam you know now, granted, depending on who your audience is, how do I say it? A lot of people may need to be educated to the point that they can believe that, you know, see, that, they, that they're ready to learn that. You know, I've, I've just come across people and I tell them plainly, you know, man, you know, the, the stuff in Islam, it, it's, it's beyond your imagination. That's actually the phrase I was looking for. It's beyond their imagination. So they think they know you know they think they know but they really don't and and if you just start in the middle and tell them man you know it says you know here it says you can beat your wife outright i, I told a guy that once <laughs> i said yeah man um yeah well, I said, man you can beat your wife oh it doesn't say that you know and he left and he's convinced convinced that i'm lying <laughs> you know right but it's not you know i remember um before i started to talk to you um, I spoke to a lady. She was um, an Ethiopian Jew. You know, she looked like a black woman, just like my relatives and such. But she was a Jew from Ethiopia. And she mentioned she mentioned that to me. She says, "Well, you know, they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to take friends. You know, they're not supposed to be friends with Christians and Jews and stuff. You know." And and I said, "What do you mean? I'm thinking that she's speaking politically. You know." And she's like. No, no, they're not supposed to be friends, you know, and I, and I just couldn't believe that, you know, she's like, you mean literally it's like, yes, literally, I, I can show you the verse, you know. So at that and, time, let us make it this way. At that time, she was educated and you were ignorant. <laughs> at that time, well, yeah, because she said they, they taught in, in her school, they took religion, they, they took Judaism, Christianity and Islam in school. So she was educated and I was ignorant. As a matter of fact, talking to her was one of the things that motivated me to finally
go ahead and look into it because she was she was the first person to tell me that it said these things matter factly in just plain language you know so and, and she told me that and said i could show you the verse you know and and even when she said i could show you the verse you know i was thinking that it was something that should be interpreted as you know well you can't yeah. really make friends <clears throat> you have a wrong interpretation yeah yeah well, well no 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 not a wrong well i thought that maybe that the meaning that she told me was an interpretation see i didn't realize oh, okay. that it actually says don't be friends with christians and muslims in that plain direct language yeah you know? so but but to come back uh to the book you know you you want to get your point across, um, but you have to. You want to place it in a place that the people can accept it. Uh, by the way, CP, uh, this guy is determined to help you. He wants to. He wants to send you proposals. <laughs> proposals for book covers for you to accept or reject. He can uh, tell him he can he can contact me in Facebook. He can send me whatever. What about what about we say to him? Okay, go and make a cover for me. Let's see if it's good. Let's see his idea. You know. Well, that, that's what he wants. He, wants. he can give it to me in private in Facebook. No problem. Right. Well, there you go. If you listen, you can give it to him in private on Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, here's the hope that that it works. Um, let's see. So, um. I actually, I had a question. I, I wasn't going to call you with the question. Um, today I was, I didn't call you until that came up about the book. Do you mind answering a question? No. You can, <laughs> have, have you ever, have you ever heard me saying, do you mind, <laughs> I mind to answer a question? This is new. <laughs> so uh, well, no. somebody told you I am Muhammad or what? Ask not <laughs> questions, chapter 5, verse 101. You know, I, I've made my donation, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. You know, but even with the asking our question thing, you don't think that that there's really a verse there. You know, it says don't ask questions, but there is. You know. In any event, my question is a simple one. Um, it. Uh, um. Um. Is anybody right in between? In between Bukhari, well, I know Ibn Ashaq was in between the time of Muhammad, the Quran, uh, and Sahih Bukhari when he wrote the first set of the beat. Other than Ibn Ashaq, is there anything, any sort of Islamic written material in between that space? You know? Well, as I know, that you see, there's nothing really for granted in Islam. As an example, uh, if we check uh, Ibn Kathir, uh, where we can find the book of Ibn Kathir? There is no book. Yeah, sorry, no, sorry, not Ibn Kathir. Sorry, not Ibn Kathir. Sorry, not, sorry, not Ibn Kathir. I mean, I mean Al Bukhari. You mentioned Al Bukhari. Where, where is the book of Al Bukhari? There is no, there is no Bukhari. There is no original yeah. book of Al Bukhari. So how we can know that the Bukhari even is exist? What we know that there is people who says that Al Bukhari said. Right. But how they can copy the book of Al Bukhari if they don't have the original book of Al Bukhari? Yeah. You know, I, I saw Hatun talking about uh, Bukhari and asking for the manuscripts about a month or so ago, and I think they were saying that the the oldest manuscript of Bukhari is, is like from the 1300s. There's no manuscript. We cannot call it manuscript because this has nothing to do with him. You know, and, and that there were two of them. You know, like somebody else had a collection of Bukhari that's got different, a different number but, of... But this is not Al-Bukhari. This is a collection of somebody wrote about Al-Bukhari. This is not Al-Bukhari. Nobody have a book of Al-Bukhari. Nobody have the books of Sahih Muslim. Nobody have the books of Sahih Bukhari, where we can find them. I change all the Muslims to show us. They, they, no, nobody have it. Even the Muslim scholars on TV, they announced, we don't have it. They don't have it. So how do how you know even that the Bukhari is even exist? We don't know. There's no books, there's nothing. And how anyone can, can copy a book, he don't have the original book of it. Yeah, well, I mean, if... 
you know, well, I understand that if Muslims are just, or at least at one point in time, they may be better now, but historically they're just, are not as good or were not as good at keeping up with their literature, their written materials as the Christians were, you know, so when we look back for, you know, manuscripts, written documents, you know, closer to the time, they, they just don't have anything, you know, um, but still, you know, I, just knowing what I know now, I wouldn't want to jump to say that Bukhara didn't exist because everybody's got a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. But if you don't try to maintain your originals, then eventually people go back to look for them and, you know, they just don't have anything because you let them deteriorate for whatever reason. Um, so, and, and still, that does that does ex expose your material to changes over time. You know, you need those manuscripts to go back and check to make sure that there were no changes. Um, so still, um, I was talking to somebody and, and they mentioned, because we were talking about even the shock actually after I spoke to you about it last week, um, you know, about why, you know, why um, they reject even the shock. And then they mentioned Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. They mentioned another sheikh who lived at the same time that didn't like him. You know, so I asked, you know, well, what did this guy write? You know, what did he write that I could go and look at it, you know, to see that he disagreed with Bukhari or, did, not Bukhari, he disagreed with the shock and didn't like him or thought he was a scam or whatever, you know, but... He couldn't. He couldn't give me the name of anything. That that's why I'm asking. You know, is there any such writings, <clears throat> even if it wasn't a direct critique of him? You know, just whatever he wrote that expresses his his opinions or rulings on Islam that we could look at. Yeah. Let let me let me show you something. I just searched <clears throat> in Google. And I found this answer, uh, a Muslim is asking, uh, a Muslim Sunni, this is like a fight between the Shia and the Sunni, as you know. The Shia, I don't like Al-Bukhari. So the Shia guy, he said to the Sunni guy, okay, well, can you show me Al-Bukhari? Read with me. He's asking about original copies of Sahih Al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. This is the question. Fatwa number 193912. The answer, there is some Shia who cast uh, etc. upon the authentication of Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. There is many argument that there is no original copies of those two books, you know, or in, in, in handwriting or etc. This is the truth. There is no other. And look what the answer is. The answer is the most funny, stupid answer. However, Sahih al-Bukhari was heard by 90,000 men from al Imam al Bukhari, have you ever heard a stupid answer like this? Al Bukhari guys is heard by 90,000 men. First, how you know they are 90,000? You have their names. To write the names of 90,000 people, you have to make like maybe I don't know how many books. How they get the numbers? Yeah. Okay, and they heard. Okay, what is the, this? Is not a question. What is the book? What is the book? Yeah. The guy is asking you, there is no such a thing, it's called Al-Bukhari. Can you show us Al-Bukhari? Then you say to him, it was heard by 90,000. <laughs> and, uh, you know, here we go. People, they are listening to me now. Can you really remember? And you quote me word by word. I said, though, no. you cannot. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. This is impossible how you can, especially we are talking about Hadith. The Quran is something you can sing, like Arabic music, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Muhammad he went uh, to a lad and there he kissed him like a rat and he thought he is a cheese and he he asked him to do his trapeze and Muhammad he said I do not know so he squeezed him three time and he, he you know anyway they have to gather good time so this is can be remembered but to to remember a guy he is quoting tens of thousands of hadith and the answer is that this is was heard by 90,000 that is the most stupid answer Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I may have been thinking about this the wrong way. So, this guy's saying that it was heard by 90,000 men. 
Yeah. So he, they used to recite Al Bukhari too. I didn't. Oh, I, I, this is like a, how he can recite. I mean, this is chip it. I mean, so. Yeah, that's because see, I'm looking at the, the in the middle of that. What's the third sentence? Al Farbari. Al yeah, Al uh, Al Farbari. <laughs> Narration of a Sahih Al Bukhari was yeah. famous because he lived uh, for a long time, and he yeah. was prizes in in in, in, in so copying, copying it. it out. out. Okay, come on. You his, know. Wait a minute, but but his narration that means the way he told it. Yeah. Right. And how so, and how he can uh, yeah, write it down? I mean, uh, what the guy is sitting and he is uh, and this guy is writing down that is impossible, you know? Like what I'm this guy? Uh, this this is stupid. Yeah, uh, but see, but, but he, he heard it from Al Bukhari <laughs> over three years. Then a number of trustworthy narrators learned from him, and from them, this book became well known. So they 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 didn't copy it by look, hand. They listened to him say it. Look what it says. Al Mustamil uh, said, one of those narrated that uh, from Muhammad ibn Yusuf al Farbari said, I copied the book of Al Bukhari from its original text that was with Ibn Yusuf. What is the original text? Okay, so he said it was with Ibn, Ibn Yusuf. Yeah, what is the text? He, he says he's copied it from a, from a guy with a guy, he is with, uh, his name is Ibn Yusuf. And now, why Al Bukhari is with Ibn Yusuf? <laughs> what happened to it? Yep. And I saw he had uh, he had not completed yet. It's not even completed. So it's not the original text. Yeah, it's not. No, it's not the original. This is this is you know it's not completed yet. There were many blank pages there, including some in uh, in uh, in, in, in snads. Uh, after which he had not written any hadith, etc. You know, it's just a collection of stupidity. There's nothing. They have nothing. And yet this is the second book after the Quran. Now, what, where is this relation coming? This this al Mustamil, whatever, al Musta guy, is... <coughs> where is this reference from? Where is, where is he getting this reference well, from? You know, uh, they are collecting... There is many uh, reference to, you know, Islamic books. They say this guy, he copied, this guy, he copied. But still mm -hmm. those people... Who knows even if this guy is, even exists? This guy, they are copying his name. And how we know that he himself did not fabricate tons of uh, stories. And who is Al-Bukhari anyway? Okay. The guy is not even an Arab. He learned Arabic. How he, is, how, how he can copy all those stories. You see, I am an Arab guy, born in the Middle East, study Arabic all my life. Sometimes I have difficulty to understand what the word means. How somebody, he is not an Arab, he is at that time this Bukhara it was part of Iran so he is from Iran he's a Persian he learned Arabic and now he is the one who's going to write down a hadith written in a in very old Arabic language how he can do that even some they say that Al-Bukhari was a blind which will make it even more crazy so uh, <clears throat> So there is no reference, there is no books, there is no Sahih. What about Sahih Muslim? The same story. I mean, why all those books, there is no reference for them? And how we can take the one who wrote about Al-Bukhari for granted? Yeah, because, huh? well, the way I, I, the way I thought about it, okay, I figured the Arabs, they were reliant on a reliable on oral, trans, uh, oral transmission. That was just what their culture was built around. They, they told somebody, and you find those type of cultures, you know. And so somebody told somebody, and, and you know, and as far as human memory goes, those type of cultures, they, you know, they remember <coughs> as precisely as humans can do, you know. But still, it's not reliable, you know, centuries and centuries later, or millennia later, like we have here, because you, you can't tell what the guy you know what the original actually said you don't know there's no proof there there's 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 no evidence as long as there's one person you know. trying to say to us he is the one who reported this how we can trust this person or that person same right. time well, well, if, if i just showed up and said yeah he said this and then where you where'd you get that from there as well according to according to according to according to according to according to now all those people are dead except for me prove that i'm not lying yeah, and even Al-Bukhari, who is Al-Bukhari anyway? Yeah. yeah. 
How how somebody never saw Muhammad, never spoke with Muhammad, never lived with Muhammad, and he's not an, even an Arab, he report what Muhammad said. Al Bukhari is a person supposedly, according to the Muslims, from the city of Al Bukhara, which is thousands of miles away from where the Islam is is coming from. So if some Muslims they went there, doesn't mean Muhammad went there. And if he himself he came later, even if he came to Mecca or Al Medina. That will not make him a person of knowledge because everybody there is dead. The ones who live with Muhammad are not there. How he can know and how he can collect this a huge number of hadith? Yeah, yeah, well, which that's, that's a whole different discussion. I don't go there. Uh, you know, in, in, in his defense, he's not, he's telling you what somebody told him Muhammad said. You know, again, my question would be how do you sort out the lies and the mistakes? You know, yeah, if, if, Assuming that, you know, he was able to remember all these Hadith stories, Hadith stories that the people claim he could remember, and that all the people, that, that he was perfectly honest, that everybody that told him a story, you know, that he claimed told him a story actually told him a story. You know, these things have seven generations, eight generations or something like that, five, six, seven generations. Of being handed down from person to person to person you know you can't know that the story you have at the end is the story that was told at first you can't tell that any one of those people in between were mistaken or outright lying and you don't know if the very the very last person in the end is lying to you about how he heard it you know you just you cannot know that my friend, my friend, we are talking here. We are talking here, me and you, for the last what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Yeah. Do you remember exactly what the first two sentences I said? There is no way you can remember. <laughs> yeah, there's no way you can remember. Yeah. So how you can remember what a guy he said in the, you know, uh, and how how those even the one who reported to Al Bukhari stories about Muhammad, how they are remembering this if they are not witnesses, and there is tons of thousands of hadith. See, it's a, it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. He said, he said, he said, she said. Nobody knows. Like Aisha, how, how the people they reach, you see, there's some hadith actually. They are funny and very stupid. How, how people they know what happened in the bedroom of Muhammad. And Aisha, she was saying that to who exactly? Like when Aisha, she said, the Prophet, he used to fundle me when I have my period. Aisha, she was doing what exactly? She was opening her house and people coming. And she started telling them how Muhammad used to have sex with her? Well, <laughs> that, it might have been just the women talking. You know, that's that's what I assumed, you know. That, that's just, you know, some of those stories <laughs> would have come down, you know, via the women folk. You know, and, and they talk too. Like this one. Um, I actually narrated. When I was in, in, in menstruating, the Prophet S.A.W.S., would order me to warp up a sheet uh, around my you know private area and he used to fund me okay this is was reported by Aisha to who uh, well, I don't know I can't read the chain what what does it say Should, it, shouldn't it say that <clears throat> All the according to's. Well, yeah, I mean, or it should say, and why? Why even she is saying that? If if the reporters of this hadith, all of them, they are men. <clears throat> they are, hold on, so that, that's, they are all men. Yeah, how how this is, was, was uh, arrive, how this arrive to those men, how I should she report this to those men? I should she used to sit with them? And she used to tell them, if you if you read if you read the the, rec the recitation, or let us say the chain of reference, you will see that the reference is coming from men. حدثنا قبيسة حدثنا سفيان عن منصور عن إبراهيم عن الأسود عن عائشة. Okay, قبيسة he said, and then he reported from Sufyan that Sufyan he said, and Sufyan he said that Mansur he said, and Mansur he said that Ibrahim he said, and Ibrahim he said that Al Aswad he said, who is Al Aswad? And why this guy is sitting with Aisha and he is she is talking to him about how the Prophet used to fundle her. 
all of them they are men. Aisha, she used to tell men how the Prophet used to do that to her. It's not even a woman. Like a woman, she is speaking to a woman. We will let it go. So the one who reported the hadith are men. But this is something very private between the wife and the husband. How this is reached to those men? It says there in front of me that Aisha, she told the guy, his name is Aswad. Okay, why she told him? Even, you see, even if my sister, if I, if I have a sister and she is married and she have sex with her husband, is it appropriate that my sister will come to me and tell me how she have sex with her husband? No. Okay, so who is this guy who Aisha is telling him how she have sex with the Prophet? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, I know the women, you know, women say things to each other that they don't say with men around and <laughs> men do the same. But why a man knows something this personal, you know, and yeah, that, that's a question that, that deserves to be answered. Yeah, there's, you know, all, all, all of this is, uh, it's endless madness and stupidity, you know. Tons and tons of hadith. And sometimes there's the hadith have no witnesses. Even the Prophet himself have no witness for it. Okay, but so how, how you reach the hadith? Like, you know, uh, when Muhammad he said, anyone he write anything from me except the Quran, erase it. <laughs> how you write this? Yeah, I, huh? Yeah, I remember that. He just told you anything else, don't write. And then you write there, the Prophet said anything, the Prophet, any, any, anything additional to the Quran. If you write it, erase it. So why you are writing it? Yeah. Well, <coughs> now, now, to back up a bit to the purpose, I'd always assume that, that Bukhari wrote his collection because the Muslims needed it. There just was not enough of substance in the Quran and trying to rely on this oral stuff, you know, it, it's just too much room for too many people to introduce their own practices and this city to do their own thing. You have to formalize it at some point. You are right. There's a vacuum. Well, there's a vacuum. There's a space of vacuum. Islam is empty. So there's somebody need to fill this empty space because uh, Quran, there's nothing in the Quran. I, I, what we will know about Islam if there's no hadith. Right. So the, the point of the hadith is we write the hadith the same as the book of the seerah. It was written to fill the gap. There's nothing about Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? You see the Muslim they say to us you are having the book of John. Who is John? We know who is John. We can tell you the Bible speak about who is he. Luke, Matthew, etc. Now if we read the Quran by itself how we can find who is Muhammad? There's nothing. We don't know who is his father. We do not know where he is located. We do not know anything about him. The Quran say nothing. It says there's a guy, sometimes his name is Ahmad, sometimes his name is Muhammad. Who is his father? Who is his mother? Nobody knows. And you can choose any verse from the Quran. You will find that it's, there's disconnection between the statement and the text and the date and the history and the location. How we will find what this is about. As an example, if we go and check the chapter of uh, 18, which is speaking about many, many stories. And the Quran mentioned to us Zul Qurnayn. Who is Zul Qurnayn? How we can find when this guy is exist? You see, when a book is reporting for me a story, what the point of this story if I did not tell you who is this person? What the point of this story if I cannot tell you where he lived? What language you speak? Which country he's coming from? Or at least related to the person you're talking to. Yeah, because the Quran, if you remember here, it says, they are asking you about the Quran, the man with the two horn. I mean, have you ever heard of a guy, his name is the guy with the two horn? At least give him a name. You don't even have a name. A guy, there's, there's no such a person as called the person with the two horn. Why, he's a goat? How we are going to find this guy? And look, in chapter 18, verse number 83, it says, And they are asking thee concerning huh? Zulqarnayn. Say, I will rehearse you, 
rehearsed to you something of his story. Okay, so now you are asking his, his the answer, but the answer is more confusing from the question. Because we do not know who is he, where he live, all what we know that this guy he found where the sun set. Where is that too? Where we can find where the sun set? And then he went all the way, he changed direction and he found where the sun rise. Where is that? So what we learn from this story, nothing. So hadith give you more sense of a real individuals who live. Aisha and Hafsa and etc. They are fighting. The woman, she is putting a sheet between her legs for her vagina. She is bleeding. It, it's a real story. Here, it's just nothing. Quran is an empty book. This is why the Muslims, they needed the hadith in order to fill the gap because Islam is an empty religion. And you know, if Muhammad said that anything, anyone he will write except the Quran, you have to erase him. So how the Muslim today, they can practice Islam without the hadith? Right, right. So I, I just figured, you know, that the Quran is empty and they're operating on tradition, but as you conquer in places and further and further out, more room for change. So you need somebody to write something. So Bukhara either takes it upon himself or he is commissioned by some political leader to write something down, to formalize it. That's what I thought, you know. But the stuff that you just showed me a few minutes ago, it's reading like that even Bukhari, they were taking it from uh, recitation and not writing it down either, which, you know, creates the same problems, you know. Um, even if they yeah. claim, even if they claim it is coming from a writing, uh, uh, who is Al-Bukhari anyway? Who is going, who is the one who's giving him that to be authentic? I mean, who is he, this guy, what? He's a companion of Muhammad, he is what, who is he? He's a Persian guy. The Arab they they don't like the Persians since when they trust them. You see, if you if you watch now any Islamic TV stations, Sunni, they keep saying the Persian, the Persian, the enemy, the Persian, Iran. They hate the Iranian. Okay, Al Bukhari, who is he? How come Al Bukhari is their hero? Because in a certain time the Caliphate they promote Al Bukhari and they approve him. And that's it. Who there? You know? Well, who there? That's, that's it. Thought. If, if the Sunni, the Sunni are the slaves of the, the, the Bani Umayyah. The Umayyad family is the one who really made Islam Islam today. Muhammad was a failure. Muhammad could not really control anything. He was local in the Arabian Peninsula. It was Bani Umayyah. The, those are the same family who Muhammad, he bought, he, he gave them 100, 100 camel to each one of them to convert to Islam, if you remember the story. Uh, Those are yeah. warrior family. They are really criminals. They love to kill. They love to steal. They love to attack. They love war. Muhammad, he bought them by bribing them. And the Quran speak about them. The Quran speak about the group of people who you share your booty in order to buy their heart. He called them al-mu'allafa qulubahum. Why he called them that? That means those people are not intending to... Uh, to convert to Islam unless we buy their heart. Imagine the Quran says that. And who is that? If we go, if we go that in the end of the tafsir, uh, in the interpretation, we will find that it says clearly that those are the family of Abu Sufyan. If you go here, chapter 9, verse number 60. Okay, if we go to the interpretation, let us see. 960. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> remember guys we agreed that next week Saturday we will have life this is the only one will be long Saturday at 2 p.m. we will start starting from this week all right uh, here chapter 9 verse number 16 and this is Ibn Kathir and this is the interpretation for this verse all right so the charity or the booty will be divided between what the Muslims the fighters blah 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 and 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 those with their heart is not uh, uh, in love with Islam. How we, why we want to pay them money? Let us see. Read with me carefully. Imam Ahmad recorded 
that Safwan ibn Umayyah said the messenger of Allah gave me his spoil etc etc blah 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 okay let's go down where it says about Mu'allaf <coughs> Aqulubahum okay uh, to draw their hearts closer some people are given given money because some of his peers might embrace Islam while others are given to collect arms from surrounding area or to defend Muslims outpost so Muhammad was using the money to make people convert to Islam and then here we will find let us see if we can find uh, for some reason I don't know why here is not given he should give details about how much money he gave them actually at the scene let us see in different translation different website <coughs> nine all right okay read with me here and those hearts are to be rec uh, uh, reconciled so that they may become Muslim so Muhammad was paying them money so they might become Muslims or that Islam might be firmly established or their peers might become Muslims or that they may they might defend Muslims etc so he's buying he's buying those people by money and those are Bani Umayyah you know so he spent money on them those he cannot beat them by by war they are a very powerful family so what he did he offered them a lot of money convert to Islam and he, this is a very smart move from him when those guys that convert to Islam everybody is start now taking Islam seriously as a threat because this is a very serious family you know what I mean yeah it's like saying like in uh, Trump he keeps so speaking about the gang what what they call the gang name gang 13 I don't know like there's a gang like you know anyway so imagine there's a gang who the the, the, the people of this gang is like uh, 50,000 in your city and everybody is terrified because of them and then you are a person who is no one and you claim to be a prophet and then this gang convert to your religion and now you are their prophet then you know exactly what does that mean you know what I mean before he's no one I mean so what but now after he bought those people he became a serious threat and he became a, a major power in the area so he bought their heart so they might join him in Islam and he promised them from him, from the wealth we will make money you will get rich this is the whole point but their heart is not really interested in Islam at all. They, they don't care really for Islam. What they care for is money. And this is why those Bani Umayyah, you know, uh, uh, let us see here. Um, let us see the book of Asbab al Nizul. No, there is no other thing about it. Anyway, in Tafsir in Arabic, you will find a lot more interpretation for this uh, from the English ones. Yeah. It's like, you know, saying now who want to convert to Christianity and I will pay you. But Muhammad, he want to convert to Christianity, the mafia, if he was a Christian prophet. You know, because the mafia is what he is looking for. They can force uh, their their violence on others and that will give him protection and same time will install fear in the heart of his enemies anyway I think we have enough for today what do you think my friend oh yeah that's good 
yeah so guys next week we will be here at 2 p.m 2 p.m at saturday live podcast however doesn't mean that during the week i will not do live podcast but let us say we have a fixed date this is a summer schedule every saturday at 2 p.m new york time we will have live podcast this way we can have people from usa from europe and even from asia it's going to be late a little bit for asia but you know what we can do i mean saturday, the second day is sunday they can stay late with us however during the week i will do live podcast remember that is good but it's going to be short short topic short uh, answer and so you can download the video and share it around with your friends all right i might do every day uh, guys i'm not saying i'm not going to do uh, i might do a live podcast every day and mostly i will but not long it's going to be short short topic short answer and it's going to be there like now how many of you watched the video i made uh, 12 hours ago few you know so uh, I don't know I think people they are interested more in chat not in coming to listen uh, otherwise why there's a lot more viewers for a video have a chat and life from a short video it doesn't make sense so anyway we will make a short video and it's going to be live it's not going to be pre-recorded and I will post it no it's going to be live broadcast but it's going to be short maybe 15 maybe 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes and we will continue this way but this coming Saturday is going to be the long where we stay many hours together and we answer anyone. So you can invite any Muslim on a debate and everybody is welcome to be with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, bro, for calling. Take care. Right. You have a good one. Yeah, see good day. bless. Take care. Bye-bye. And I hope, I hope this coming week uh, we will have some Muslims who call us and uh, they are willing to prove us wrong if we get lucky. Until then, I let you uh, enjoy the rest of uh, your day and I pray to the Lord that he will uh, uh, he will use you <clears throat> to be uh, uh, you know the good hand which is going to gather and bring more people to be saved from every cult around us you see the world today is very corrupt and we do sin we we ourselves we are sinners and we need a lot of work in ourselves and in the same time we have a duty we are not worms we are not insect we have a duty in this life time go fast yesterday I was a kid tomorrow you find yourself you are 50 and then the day after you find yourself you are 70 time goes so fast you will not believe it so don't let time kill your future let your future kill the time which mean work for your future and the future for us as a Christian is not when we die it is the end of it it's when we die is the beginning of it that is our future so work for that day that day is the day which is very important this life is very short and how you live how you die you might not even be remembered there's a few people they come through this earth few names remembered and millions they are forgotten they are forgotten by man and they will be forgotten by God so don't be one of them work in your life so you can be remembered remember by your family remember by people who really love you remember by your neighbors how good how, how wonderful you are and remember by the most important by your Lord by your maker for he will remember the good you do it's not right to say that we do not need to do the good work that is a false teaching have nothing to do with the Christianity Christian who don't have fruits he don't belong to Jesus have nothing to do with him everything about him was not a speeches everything about him was a fruits everything is done by Jesus was not speech it was a fruits this is why he was the person who resurrect people from death he did not make a speech about resurrection he rose people from death he did not make a speech about I will die and I will resurrect myself and nothing happened he did what he said everything he said he did it so if you want to be his followers or part of his kingdom you have to do what he do so bring people more to Christ be more faithful and don't be a coward 
and if somebody trying to to uh, to uh, 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 let us say to lie about the Messiah and you witness such a thing and you don't say anything and you do not refute him we don't want to do violence we are not we are not promoting violence we will not promote such a thing our Lord is the Lord of love and mercy but it's your duty to expose the liars and to fight lies our fight is not with the mankind our fight is with the devil he is the father of all lies so when a person he spread lies about the Messiah about the gospel you have a duty to fight the devil himself to expose his lies and to save the person who is making those lies or he is copying those lies because he is ignorant and this is how we feel about the Muslims that they are ignorant need to be saved the Muslim is the same as somebody he look at the sand of the desert but he think it's water but the fact it's a mirage this is exactly who is their God this is exactly who is or what is their heaven it is nothing but a mirage our Lord is true and the truth will set you free until I see you again Christ is Lord and Islam is false I mean to that and we'll see you soon again bye bye